On the leadership, on the continued leadership of the Department of Natural Resources, it's it's my view that that this department is a highly professional group of, of people who have a very complex job to do. Um, they over the over the years they've been whipsawed back and forth um, in how leadership and how they are led. And it's my intention to be a servant leader for those people, to bring out the best in them, to give them the authority that they need to do their job, okay, rather than micromanage them and tell them how to do their jobs. I will say what I want done, okay, I will define and outline our vision and, and, and our objectives for how we will, or for, you know, what I think we need to do, and I'll work it collaboratively, of course, with uh, the DNR management, but it, I, I will leave it to the, the employees, the good employees of DNR, to figure out how we're going to meet those, those goals and objectives. Um, the other thing I intend to do with these folks is I, I'm going to listen to the people of the department. And there's, at, at this point, um, several commissioners ago appointed a, an advisory group that sits at the top of DNR that's about 9 or 10 or 11 people strong. And, you know, quite frankly, since I started this campaign, it's like, man, I've had more advice in the last six months than I've had in the last 35 years on how to do things. And so, you know, it's my view that I don't need, a, you know, a group of advisors sitting at the top telling me what to do because my advisors are going to be the people of Washington State from the various interests, okay? Every, everybody from the, the Farm Bureau, the cattlemen, um, and the environmental groups, the, the cons conservation groups, we're going to all work together, okay? And I'm going to reach out to each of them to seek advice so that we can make the appropriate decisions, okay, that, that are in the best interests of the state of Washington. And, and I'm looking forward to doing that. The second thing I'm going to do with the people in, inside of the Department of Natural Resources is I intend to roll out a professional development program that allows entry-level foresters and biologists and administrators within the department to be able to promote up through the department into management jobs. And as it stands now, as I see it, we have a top-down appointment of managers uh, in the department, and I want to be able to promote managers from the, from the bottom up. And to do that, I want to have programs, and I intend to have programs, to develop those personnel, to allow them time that they need for continuing education. I want to work with local colleges to uh, enroll people in certificate programs in organizational leadership and management in order to bring out and teach our people, you know, the best way to do things. And as an example of that, you know, the Navy, in my 25 years in the Navy, you know, when you come into the Navy, you don't know anything about the Navy, okay? You're entry level. I don't care who you are. As you come up through that, you know, they train you and they develop you into a, into leadership jobs. And, and that's what I want to do with the folks in DNR that want to promote up into the ranks of, of management to have that opportunity to do so. And uh, I'm looking forward to doing that one. Um, and I've got, you know, I've got some some good ideas in mind. Another thing I, I'm, I'm intending to do is I'm going to take a hard look at our veteran base. We have a big, you know, uh, veterans uh, population here in the state of Washington, many of whom have served our country very, you know, loyally. And um, one of the things I want to do is work with uh, within the Department of Natural Resources, but and also with other uh, state agencies to have a helmets to hard hats program, where we can bring veterans in to. The department and train them as foresters or biologists or, or whatever to you know become and and to continue their service to our state and to our country through a helmets to hard hat program and i'm working with a, a retired major general coffee on this uh, to get this initiative going and uh, we have a lot of we have a lot of uh, very positive feedback on this so far so that's kind of what I intend to do as the, as the Commissioner of Public Lands. So Good. that's quite a, 
uh, a plan that you've laid out there. You've addressed the issues. You've addressed how you're going to solve the issues. In your opinion, what is going on right now in the public lands commissioner position that's being ignored? Something that may, you may have actually already mentioned it, but what's what's being ignored right now that you think is critical that you want to address right away as soon as you get in? Um, I think one of the things that I want to address right away is, is restoring healthy forest ecosystems, okay, um, to, a, to a state of health. Um, policies over the last 20, 25 years, it, you know, both at the federal and state level, have been to leave our forests alone and just, you know, protect them. But that's a failed policy because, as we've seen, if we try to protect them and leave them alone, they just go up in smoke. And an example of that is in the Loomis State Forest, which is in eastern Washington, in, in a fire back in uh, uh, the mid-25, uh, 26 time frame, burned an area about the size of Connecticut, and it took out a protected area called the Loomis State Forest, which was protected for lynx habitat, a, a, a good bit of that. and. Um, then it was just left after the fire untended no no logs were taken out because it was a protected area and it's going to burn again because as this is this these logs and wood you know break down they've already been dried out it's contributing to a very significant source of fuel okay and when it burns the second time it's going to almost result in a scorched earth policy so i'm going to take a hard look at 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 getting well no what i'm gonna do and let's kind of rewind there i am gonna get in and restore this healthy forest ecosystems we have to do it because if not it goes up in smoke and that doesn't help with climate change it doesn't help with the sequestration of carbon it it doesn't help so let's get in there and make these forests healthy which is the best thing we can do in my opinion to help you know from a commissioner's perspective with the issue of, of climate change okay uh, the second thing I'm gonna do is provide positive leadership okay um, I think you know right now employee satisfaction surveys show that morale within the Department of Natural Resources is low and part of getting around that is to be able to communicate on a frequent basis with all of your employees and uh, uh, I am a huge believer in managing by walking around, leading by walking around. Okay, and let me get this straight. You lead people. You manage resources. Okay, so human resource management to me is not the right word. It's human resource leadership. And I intend to be a positive leader. And you know what? I want to make sure that our people want to come to work in the morning. Okay? I want to make sure that our people are having fun doing what they're doing because you know you don't go into a job to be to be beat down you go into a job to earn money to make a living for you and your family and you go into your job to derive satisfaction for for your work in your life and I want to I want to ensure that our people in DNR have that opportunity to do that so uh, <laughs> I'm a servant leader but I'm also, folks, I'm a fun-based leader. And we're going to have fun in, it, that by, in so doing, we're going to work with the people of Washington to be a lot more collaborative. Um, the third thing I'm going to do as, as the head of DNR is I'm going to start communicating with the people. Okay? Um, the people need to hear from their elected officials. And uh, we've already started on a series of what we call MAC Talks, which you can find on our, our Facebook page. And I'm going to do MAC talks, and we're going to go on, you know, when we make big decisions affecting um, the, the, you know, the, the generation of revenues from our state managed lands to, um, uh, that may have an effect on the people, uh, I'm going to tell the people what we're doing and why we're doing it. And, you know, if it, even if it's an unpopular decision, and sometimes we have to make those, I really want to make sure that the, the people of Washington State know why we're making these decisions. Okay, the fourth thing I want to do is let's let's open up um, our forests a little bit for access to recreation and, and other things. 
We live in one of the most beautiful states uh, in America. Um, I grew up in the Pacific Northwest and I endeavored with every fiber of my being to come back here to retire. And the reason I ende endeavored to come back here is because of its beauty and because of my ardent love for the out of doors. I love being out in the environment. I'm a, I'm an, a mountaineer. I've climbed virtually every mountain in the Cascade Range from Mount Shuxon down to Mount Shasta. Climbed extensively in Europe. I've backpacked the Pacific Crest Trail uh, throughout the state of Oregon and parts in Washington. Uh, I'm a hunter, I'm a, I'm a fisherman, uh, and I just, I like to be out in, in the natural environment. And it, it's every day, uh, I'm fortunate enough to be living in a place where I can just go right out my back door and, and take walks in the environment. And I wanna see the rest of the people in this state have the same ability to get outside and use our public lands for recreation because it's restorative okay to the to the to the soul to get us out of the cities and the noise and the pollution within our cities out into the environment so they can enjoy the the experience of being out in the forest and even if it means getting stung by bald faced hornets every once in a while which happened on one of my last excursions so uh you know, well, you know, we, we just gotta we gotta allow our people to, to get out there. Um, on another point along that line, we we are looking at, at measures for recreation that are concentrating great numbers of of recreationalists in small areas. And with a growing population, there's no reason why we can't open up that access to the people of Washington to have greater ability to get out and recreate in the manner in which they choose. That, that you know, whether that be backcountry horsemen to uh, OHV or off-highway vehicle riders to hikers, uh, if people want to go out and, and, and shoot on public lands, you know, let's, let's do it, but let's do it in a sensible manner that doesn't, you know, create interference between the groups. And the way we can do that, I think, is to open up how, you know, the access that we have. From a safety perspective, of course, uh, since we are in the business of generating revenues, if and when we have industrial operations going on in the forest, we'll just close those down, put out a public notice to everybody to let them know, hey, we're going to close this area down during timber harvesting operations. So, you know, please stay stay clear for now. And you know, I think that's a fair way of doing business. So, so you've had a tremendous plan of having open communication, working with your peers. Uh, breaking down the walls that are currently in place what would you say that could be done by the average person like how ca how can they help contribute uh, to the efforts that you're doing so like you, you mentioned about working with the uh, with the veterans uh, what what else what else could there be that like the average person to want to get involved and and help in the forest uh, restoration and, and and everything of that nature any any advice you could give you know, yeah, there, there are a lot of groups in this state that very much enjoy getting out and helping uh, with trail construction, with uh, upkeep of, of areas and trails. And it, it, a prime example of that, I'm going to give two, and, and there's many more, but the backcountry horsemen, they, there's a forest near my home that they go up and they do trail maintenance on. They do, they do campsite host um, work on, on a strictly volunteer basis. And, and these types of groups that are, are willing, if you know, given the opportunity to use our lands, are willing to pay back to, to guarantee the future of that use. And another group, and I've been a member of this organization since uh, 1968, companies like Recreational Equipment, who, who put together trail maintenance days and they get REI members to go out and help with trail maintenance. There's at the federal level, the Pacific Crest Trail Association who helps you know, with maintenance on, on, our, on our Pacific Crest Trail, which I think is a national treasure. Um, I think um, you know, other groups, the OHV riders help get out and do volunteer work. Uh, the snowmobiling uh, folks, um, are, are huge supporters 
of getting out and paying back or or volunteering their time and effort to uh, to maintain our trails and our forest lands in a manner in a responsible manner one of the things i, I really want to advocate for all of the users of our, our state lands and our federal lands is let's work and develop a no trace ethic and so if you come in and use the land for whatever reason please leave it you know I, I would ask that you leave it better than you found it you know pick up after yourselves remove you know any debris that is generated from whatever activity you're doing and and let's you know take care of our lands and if we all work together we're gonna have I think a really you know we're gonna have some really good programs there for our people thank you so much for your time today Steve you've been able to cover so much information thank would you go ahead and take this time, I'm going to give you the floor, okay. to go ahead and address the, the viewers, readers, voters of Washington State, sure. and, and nationally, as everybody's watching. Sure. Go ahead and let them know your, your final thoughts uh, as far as Public Lands Commissioner goes, anything that you may not have been able to cover yet. Yeah. The floor is yours. Well, yeah, thank you for that opportunity. First off, I, I just want to say that, <clears throat> you know, I, I, was, I proudly served in the United States Navy for, for 25 years. And have worked as a program manager for an excellent Puget Sound uh, engineering firm for the past 10. And I have been one of the most prolific incident command instructors in the state of Washington, training you know well over 2,000 firefighters, police officers, deputy sheriffs, and public safety people. And I intend to use that leadership experience to be a positive leader. The other thing is I believe that I am really the people's candidate in this race. I'm endorsed, you know. I'm, I, I, my, you know, one of my badge of honors is to be endorsed from all the way through, from through the primaries and into the state uh, uh, final race by the Washington State Farm Bureau, and I've got the endorsement of every uh, county farm bureau in Washington State, and that's a, an honor I'm very proud of. I'm also very proud of the fact that uh, I am endorsed by the pulp and paper workers uh, unions. And I am endorsed by the machinist unions, which, because I have a very, you know, pro labor way of working with people, and and I I very much appreciate those endorsements. Um, I'm also very active in veterans advocacy, and with other programs, including a chairman of a, a group called Operation Steadfast, which takes returning veterans and uh, who are at risk of suicide, and we we come up with healthy lifestyle choices to help them out. But and you know, as part of being involved in the process of government, uh, I believe uh, you know I've I've tried to make a positive difference for the people of our state. Um, as as your lands commissioner, it is my intent and duty to keep you, my you know the people that put me into office, and and even those that didn't vote for me. To, to listen to what it is that you have to say so that I can give you the best possible leadership I can. So when we we sit down at the table and we have these tough decisions to make, we're making the decisions that are in the best interest of all the people in the state of Washington and not just the select few. Again, it is my intent to keep issues out of the courtroom while working to cooperate at the table to get things done. Finally, I am a native of the Pacific Northwest. I'm a third generation native of the Pacific Northwest. And I've worked in, in, on ranches, uh, I've worked in orchards, I worked in the plywood mills, uh, anti-pollution support industry, building blowpipe systems for, for mills. And that's a, another, you know, industry I want to see come back in this state is, is mills. Um, there, there's a lot of work that needs to be done, and we can employ a lot of people. And jobs. I want to create jobs in the forest. I want to keep, create jobs helping haul debris away, including, you know, timber uh, from our harvests. Uh, I want to create jobs in our service economies, in our rural communities. And I want to put people back to work in our rural communities of Washington State. It's, it's vitally important to them, and it breaks my heart when I drive through some of these towns who have been beset 
by the complete shutdown of an industry as a result of a court decision. And let's, let's turn this around, put you back to work, and retrain you uh, to, to be, you know, have vibrant rural communities again. Finally, I would very much appreciate your vote. Um, it, this is a tough race. I have a, you know, a tough, well-funded uh, candidate who's, who's uh, funded primarily from downtown Seattle interests. Um, that I don't believe represents the best interests of the rest of the, the you know, the people of the state of Washington. And I, I'd really appreciate, you know, taking a hard look at each candidate. And when you make your decision, vote, vote for me. I can be my, I have a, a good Facebook page and I've got a website. The, the Facebook is Steve McLaughlin for Public Lands Commissioner. And our website is www.mac4lands.org. I'll spell it M-A-C, the number four, lands.org, L-A-N-D-S. And on there, as you might imagine, uh, as a rookie to running for public office, this is the very first time I've run. Uh, running a campaign is expensive. And so I would ask that you uh, take a look at that donate tab on our website and uh, if you have a few extra dollars to support our race, I'd very much appreciate it. You know, it's been a pleasure uh, being here talking to you today, and I really want to thank you for your time. Well, thank you, Steve, and good luck. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you progress further along and maybe some follow-ups down the road. Well, I really appreciate it. Thank you. This is David Malakarth, the Liberty Chronicle Independent. Thank you for watching.